someone asked me, they're like, is that a guy or a girl or a trans? And I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, so yes to what? Guy, girl, or a trans? And I was like, you oh so my stupid, God. my guy. What are your preferred pronouns? Literally anything as long as you're nice to me. I don't care. It's not it. I get that a lot. Terrible. Really. Yeah, very, That's very bad. Well, you get people, you get like straight dudes. I've seen a lot of your stuff where you're literally doing videos specifically for like cis hetero dudes. I, that was one of the bigger mistakes I've made, to be honest. Not really. I, I, I don't mean that like seriously, but it's hurt views because I get reported a lot by them because they're butt hurt. Not that I care about views, but like if I'm if I'm like doing a tutorial or like educational purposes, like I want people to see it. It's it's the, the like how much you care versus the do you care about other things? You know what I mean? Like you see like someone who wants to truly like help people and like spread as much, so like spread Here's the word the as much, you know? So like views, yeah, like they're it's hitting more people. Yeah. Here's the thing, <laughs> and I'm gonna say this. And I hope my mom doesn't fucking listen to this. Uh, my mom stopped listening, so I'm glad she did because he got he got real real sexual real fast. This podcast. So. Um, I do what I do because selfishly, I would like to be responsible for as many women's orgasms in my life as possible. Purely selfish. I really don't care about the men I'm trying to help. It's for their girlfriends, and that's it. Like, so they come to you in their DMs, and they're like, Sid. Like, this guy is obsessed with your videos, and, like, I started watching them, and, like, I'm obsessed, too. And I'm also <laughs> in Canada. Do we meet up? Is this a fantasy of yours? No, no. Literally, I just want, I just think that straight girls deserve better. Like, girls that sleep with cis men deserve better. They do. And that's, that's it. Like, I just want them to have better. It's already a curse that you are attracted to that section of humanity. You might as well get good sex out of it while you're there. True. Sorry, and a lot of There are a few of you that I love, but not many. And some of you are in thin fucking ice. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> thin fucking ice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I feel like I've heard that a lot. And because I, I do have, like, quite a bit of, like, straight female friends and, like, that type of shit. And, and, and just, like, my experiences. Like, I did date and fuck men. This, ugh, I, you know what? I, I don't want to say that I regret it because I'm glad that it happened because it's a part of my person and whatever. But oh my god, like just the fucking like everything like in your videos, like the, you know, the intensity and going too fat and like all of that shit is like so real. It's so real. Thank you. So I had someone come into one of my lives the other day, and say, "Why are you posing as an expert? You're not even built like a top." What and I was fuck? just like, I don't know if you are a baby gay or a full grown man, but either way, you are what is wrong with the people I'm talking to. Yeah. Because there is no body type. There is no person type. It's literally just like, do you want to make this person feel good? And are you willing to like take criticism, take notes, learn and be better? Like throw your ego out the fucking window. Like that. it's just. Don't say that to me. Tops that and bottoms. That has nothing to do with anything. Tops and bottoms or pre preferences in the bedroom only. That is just exact. That's that what it is. Tops, bottoms, switches, preferences in the bedroom. Okay, so I want to talk about this. And thank you for saying that because there are two mm -hmm. things about this that are super duper bothering me, okay? The first is people using the word switch incorrectly. I came to TikTok thinking I knew what I was prepared for. Yeah. But the baby gays threw me for a new one because the word switch has been used to mean something else for decades. Top, bottom, and verse traditionally are used for like giving and receiving pleasure. Mm -hmm. And dom, sub, and switch have been used for the power dynamic. And they're two very yes. different things. They yes. have nothing to do with each other. And they're both very important to communicate, right? Yeah. So somebody will DM me and be like, I'm a switch. And I'm like, but how do you mean that? Because like, I'm yeah. a switch too, but I'm also a touch me not. Yeah. So like, I don't want to, I don't want to tell someone I'm a switch because I am and then yeah. have them think that they have consent to touch me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like I mistake switch a lot in terms of that because like, I, I always like before getting on TikTok, I thought like verses and switches were specifically for gay men, like pitching and catching that kind of thing. I didn't realize mm. that there was the switch yeah. meant dom sub switch. And that's a completely different thing. Cause that's just yeah. like, who wants to be dominant, who wants yeah. to be submissive, and who likes a little, like, mix of both. 
until, and then I was like, oh, so verse yeah. is what's preferences in the bedroom and switch is like along the same vein of like either or, but it's with whether you want to be dominant yeah. or submissive. Crazy. Yeah. It's literally just like, I feel like a lot of the babies need to hear this. It's literally just like top, bottom, verse is literally just giving and receiving pleasure, right? Yeah. It doesn't have anything to do with your personality, who yeah. you are, but it is a real thing. It is important yeah. to like listen when someone tells you that because at the least serious point, if you ignore someone or you like kind of erase those labels, what you're doing is ignoring them stating a preference, which is never a good idea in terms of sex. Like, like they're telling you, I'm like, I'm like, I'm a top, right? So don't come to me if you're trying to like get me in the mood. Don't come to me and tell me you want to touch me because like yeah. the, part, the part of sex that's enjoyable for me is making other people feel good. Yes. Right? So that's yep. why I'm communicating that to you. Exactly. But at the in the in the most serious situation, you're ignoring a boundary and you're normalizing completely walking over the lines people draw and consent yes. Yes. and like pressuring people into doing things they don't want to because you don't understand why they feel the way they do. And it also comes from ego, I feel like, and yeah. ego and insecurity. Like if you're someone and you're trying to make them feel good and trying to control the situation because you're like, I want to do this, yeah. but they don't want to do that. But you think that they should or would or you want that that's how you had it played out in your head you're not thinking about mm -hmm. wanting to do what they want to do that's the whole fucking point the whole fucking exactly point. you know what i mean it's not that people don't do both it's that they have a preference or they have a boundary yeah and they're comfortable enough and 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 us as queer people and like mo majority i'm sure of your listeners are, are women aligned in some way yeah being raised in a society where we're not like encouraged to express our preferences or boundaries and then within the queer community like shaming people for doing so it's just not healthy behavior and like we should be supporting each other and listening to each other and trying to understand each other's experiences you know yep I completely agree another thing that I saw on your videos is the whole thing about like that consent isn't sexy and someone was saying that consent isn't sexy yeah like what the fuck specifically <clears throat> that asking for consent ruins the mood no it doesn't that was, and I, I heard that, I was like, you've clearly never had a woman tell you she wants to fuck you. That is the hottest thing. It's that probably the best thing that's, <laughs> that ever happens. <laughs> or like asking someone what they want and having them answer you honestly. Like, yeah, there's so many ways to go about it. And the fact that you don't know what you're doing, Kyle, is not my problem, but you need to do it. And it takes yeah. practice to like make it hot, I guess, but, but yeah. it's gotta be done. It's gotta be done. There's no, you don't have a choice. I wonder if like, they're worried about like rejection if they ask for consent and they get rejection i wonder if like they're like that's like a fear of theirs if someone's like can i you know whatever can i come in or can i you know kiss you and they're just like no <laughs> then then it's all over if that's something you are worried about you should not be involved with that person physically if in the back of your mind you're like they don't actually want this yeah. why are you going through with it first of all why is that fun for you who wants to do, who wants to do anything physical with someone who doesn't want to do it? Like that's first of like all a crime. A and literal... rapey people and people who want control yeah. and domination and they don't want a relationship or a collaborative sexual experience. Shitty people. Right. If if you're if you're worried that asking will will not give you the answer that you want, you have to ask. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. I will say this is one thing that I've like learned about myself like pretty recently. Mm -hmm. Like with, if I have someone that it's like instant sexual chemistry with and mm -hmm. nothing else is built, like mm -hmm. there's no mentally, you know, no mental, no emotional, mm -hmm. it never goes anywhere. It doesn't turn into a relationship, yeah. it doesn't turn into a friendship. But the people that I have actually like gotten to know before like fucking them, mm -hmm. they have either turned into friendships or relationships. Mm -hmm. it, that's you fuck it. your friends? No. Lesbian? <laughs> no! I swear. No, no, no. I mean, like... How many of your friends have you had sex with? No. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, don't have, I don't have sex with friends. Acquaintances, yes. That's friends, not what no. I asked you. How many of your friends have you had sex with? How many of the people you are friends with now have you had sex with in the past? Three. <laughs> okay, cool. But none of, like, none of, my, none of my TikTok friends. I have literally none of my TikTok... Or, uh, yeah, none of the friends that I, like, am in a group with. I, yeah. I've stayed away from that. I'm not shitting where I am. you. I'm proud uh, of you. <laughs> but I was meaning like not my like friends that I've like known in my real life, but like that I've been on Tinder dates with and stuff like that. So it was like mm -hmm. going somewhere romantic gotcha. and then we're like, nah. 
but like we kept as friends because we actually fucking liked each other gotcha. it, outside of that is what I guess what I'm saying that um, plays a lot into like when people ask me um how to not catch feelings because I get that a lot yeah and at the end of the day like first of all I always 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 communicate beforehand that all I want is sex yeah I'm literally just like, I just want you for your body and nothing else. Is that okay with you? And if they say no, then nothing happens and we can be friends. <clears throat> yeah. But if they say yes, then it's like two consenting adults who know exactly what the limits and boundaries are. And it's perfect. But if I'm just sleeping with you, I don't want to know anything about you. I don't want to get to know you. I don't yeah. want to bond with you. Like, I don't want to know anything about you that could make me like you. That's how you don't catch feelings. That's it. People, people <clears throat> will be like, well, I'm, like, casually sleeping with this person, but, like, also I slept over and, like, we watch movies together and, like, we go hang out. Sometimes I'm, like, that's why you catch feelings because there's, like, mm-hmm. the chemical reaction that is, like, the physical stuff. And then you have, like, emotional support at the same time. Like, how are you not going to catch feelings? That equals feelings. Yeah. So yep. just, just, like, don't get involved. That's get naked, but don't get involved. That's my advice. I think there is something to say, though, about, like, the way fake intimacy comes about. Like if someone's not having those boundaries in their head to where they're just like, oh, I'm just gonna like fuck and I'm not, you know, if mm-hmm. you have that prep, I feel like in your brain, like if you if you do sleep with someone on like the first date or like you, you know, have like a one nighter shit like that, it creates fake intimacy. I feel like it creates fake intimacy because you're getting it to does, know. But if you're in like a if you're in a date scenario you already have established that you have romantic, the capacity to at least have romantic feelings for that person. Yeah. Because you're going on a date with them. You're not, it's not a casual one-off hookup. You're going on a date. True. With them. True. So I, I don't sleep with people like that. Like for me personally, friendship, romantic, and sexual feelings are all three very separate things. Yeah. And I rarely experience two of them for the same person. Gotcha. Yeah. I need to learn from you. <laughs> <laughs> you have such strict, like, in box and box and box and like it's so organized and I like envy that because my life is pretty organized but that my (laughs) (laughs) that type of my that portion of my life is so fucking it's a shit show it's not on purpose it has a lot to do with me being on the spectrum to be honest Mm -hmm. because if I don't know where I stand with someone I have anxiety all the time because I won't get the little intonations and what they're saying to me and the way they Mm -hmm. behave Mm-hmm. Like that shit all goes over my head. And the other thing is that when somebody establishes what kind of relationship I have with them, it's very hard for me to see them any other way. So like I have a friend, she's also a TikToker and uh, I, she was one of the first people I ever followed and I had a big crush on her and I was like, she's very, very attractive and I was really attracted to her. And so I like was in her comments. I slid into her DMs. Like yeah. she added me on Snapchat and was oh. like, and, and I thought she was flirting with me. And then I went on her Instagram and I saw like a couple scrolls down that she had a boyfriend. And oh. I was like, do you or do you not have a boyfriend? And she was like, yeah, I thought we were just joking. So when we, she said that to me, I was like, friendship. Yep. I was like, you and I are friends. Yep. And then a couple weeks later, she was like, by the way, I talked to my boyfriend and we've like opened up our relationship to me being allowed to like casually interact with other girls, like flirt, hook up with. Gotcha. And, so, and then she started flirting with me like mad, like she yeah. was all over me. And yeah. I normally, I would have loved that, but it made me panic because I was like, no, like this is my friend. Like, yeah. Cause you already it. put her in that box of friendship. Exactly. You, is it hard for you to switch that? Like almost if, impossible, if, okay. almost impossible. Like okay. once you have established that you want to be my friend, yeah. it's really hard for me to see you any other way. Gotcha. And I told her that and I was like, you ruined everything. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> you, you ruined, ruined it. Everything. I absolutely would have done exactly what she wanted from me yeah. if she had just not gone to the friend place. Because yeah. like, and it's not like on purpose. I'm not like friend zoning people. It's just like, yeah, I don't sleep with my friends. I don't date my friends. And that's and messy. I think, yeah. I think that's messy. And I think that's probably good that you didn't, that you weren't able to switch her back or choose to switch her back to that because yeah. like, cause she reached out to you even though she wasn't single and then but, yeah. and then she pulled back and then she started going mass because she was like oh She's like i have permission now yeah i have permission now so like that's just some messy ass shit that you don't need to deal with and i think that you know being on the spectrum is a superpower to be able to do that and and because all of that it cuts through the bullshit because yeah. that stuff is bullshit in the end so yeah. regardless if you can pick up on it or not i yeah. think it doesn't matter you know it's it like makes if, life a little bit complicated to be honest because it's sometimes hard to like fully comprehend someone's intentions with you yeah which which does change someone's actions like which does change the way someone's actions speak yeah 
gotcha. it's very very important and it's really really hard it's like it's like speaking three different languages but mm-hmm. i can't translate from them from each other right yeah. so if i have a really really good friend who then decides they're into me i don't know how to speak that love language to them because yeah. they're my friend so yeah. I, they are speaking friend to me that's it and i definitely admire people who are straightforward and people who can just cut through that stuff and just be like honesty right here like don't play games like yeah. that's that stuff is is amazing and like because i i hate that i don't like playing games i i don't feel myself when i have dated people who i felt like were doing that yeah now because it's manipulation and 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 stuff like that and so but i've i've done that where i've gone outside of myself not my true self because i thought that that's where i needed to be to get what i needed to get whether that was you know validation or Mm -hmm. or love or something like that because i thought that it was something that was for me Mm-hmm. And it never worked out. It never mm-hmm. worked out. And I'm like, oh. And and I don't know if you feel this way too, but like, I just don't like. I'm just not a fan of mysterious girls. I don't like nobody's mysterious. Like everyone right. is the same person. I I fucking hate when. And and I do I and I think it's along the same vein of like that one dimensional. Like you don't really know this person and yeah. and that kind of thing. Like we, we're all babies of shit and need and poop and cry. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're correct. For sure, but I like mysterious girls. I like you people. do? I like girls who are mean to me. I really do. There's something about <laughs> it that I just am like, yes, please. Yes. Also, thank you. So, like, if you're a bitch, but, like, I find you physically attractive, and I don't know what makes yeah. you a bitch. I don't know if you're a yeah. terrible person or if you're just cranky. Yeah. That is my type. Like, like Maze from Lucifer. Like, like she is the epitome of sexy to me like, like type to date or type no, to just no, fuck no, and no. have casual a, sex yeah oh yeah. for sure 100 yeah. percent. i'm with you on that like you can't date someone who's rude to people like that's just well no like, but i i that is fun. fun with them <laughs> yeah exactly oh, it's completely fun like, i was i guess i was meeting dating i was meeting dating. oh sorry i don't yeah. I don't really yeah. date, so like that will never be like my instinct. I literally yeah. just, like either fuck around or get married. Like that's it. <laughs> I've been on I've been one, on the one real date in my entire life, and that's so. Like, so what's wifey then? What what is wifey partner? What do they what do they look like if they're not bitches that are mean to you? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I have been in one real relationship in my entire life. She was she just someone who just really cares. Yeah. Like, that's it. Like, that's really, if you're, if you're nice to me when you need to be and you're mean to me when you need to be, but you like care about me the whole time, that's what I need. Ooh, okay. I get it. I get it. it. So that you can, so someone who can riff with you, um, roast you. Roast to flirt ratio. Exactly. But we'll cuddle with you after. Yes, please. Also, Ah! like, if you can't be the big spoon, it's not going to work out. Oh, (laughs) exposing yourself as little spoon. It's not even exposing. Who doesn't like to be held? You know what I, I know. mean? That's like, what I'm just... saying. That's what I'm fucking saying. I love being Little Spoon. I am a proud <laughs> Little Spooner. Because guess what? Mm-hmm. When I fuck the shit out of you, I want you to hold me. Is that okay? <laughs> I did a lot of hard work. I'm sweaty. I want to be held. Jesus. <laughs> fuck. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right, but that's one of the problems with toxic masculinity in the community, that you're just missing out. Like, aside from the fact that oh, it's, nice. like, really stupid and makes you look dumb and can, like, alienate people from the community, like, you're literally just missing out on all the good things. Yeah. Like, being held by a pretty girl. And there is such a thing as you can be a submissive top. You know that's what me. I mean? That's me. Like, yeah. It, isn't that, isn't it, like, I like, it I mean, I nothing to do with like, each other. Yeah. And it also has nothing to do with, like, your masculinity or femininity. Like, the power dynamic, mm-hmm. your gender expression, and, mm-hmm. like, your preference for giving or receiving are all completely separate entities, and people tend to use them interchangeably. Yeah. And that is crazy to me. I'm mask. Yeah. I'm also submissive, and I'm also a touch-me-not. And those... Yeah. I'm not even mask. I'm, like, chaotically gender fluid. But... Yeah. Um, those three things have nothing to do with each other, but they're all true. Like, I have a friend who's a femme switch verse. You can, you can do both or like yeah. a dom, a dom mask top, like no, yeah. dom femme top. Like it just is. You could be, yeah, you could be a dominant masculine pillow princess and it still makes sense. It, and I, when you're saying these things, I like think about it for a second and like I picture it and I'm like, uh-huh, yep. Because it's and true. Then I'm like, uh-huh, it's like, yep. The power dynamic is either if you're dominant, you like being in charge. If you're submissive, you like when your partner's in charge. 
If you're a top, you like to give. If you're a bottom, you like to receive. Yep. And top and bottom don't necessarily mean that's all you want to do, but it's like the good part of it for you. It's what gets you. It's what gets you about it. And crazy, it can change. It can change. Your preferences can change. However nuanced they are, they change with each experience, new experience that you have, whether it's with partner you've previously been with or a new partner or a new relationship, like whatever the fuck your, your stuff can change over time. Like it can change. And for some people it can't, and that's okay too. And the other thing is that you don't owe that information to anyone except for who you're sleeping with. Yeah. Like you don't have to walk around and be like, I'm a top if you don't want to. Yeah. You don't don't have to have a podcast where you talk about it intimately with uh, (laughs) people that you just met either. (laughs) That is also true, but I feel like you're speaking on personal experience right now for some reason. So, like, I, don't I know. always speak from personal experience. <laughs> I, 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 I can't not speak from personal experience. I was making a it joke feels, about you're it, the only one here with a podcast. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> That's what I thought you meant. Like, I was like, fuck yeah, I fucking speak with. What well, do you think I'm lying on this podcast? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I am. I am. I do that. And that's the thing is that people make too big a deal of it. They put labels on it. They're like, uh, if you can't drive, you're a bottom, which I think is very funny because most of my friends who are bottoms can't drive. (laughs) But it's, it's more literally just like telling people how to interact with you if they want to get with you. Yeah. And you don't owe that information if you don't want that. And it's stupid that people are like, both people are like, that doesn't exist. And that people are also like, this is everything. Mm-hmm. I will make jokes about being a top. I will make jokes about people being bottoms. I will, yeah. I will do all that shit because it's funny. Yeah. But I know there's no truth to it. Exactly. It's funny. Well, I feel like there, oh, there are kernels of truth to some things. You know what I mean? You can like, say that, but at the end of the everything. day, like just because you prefer to fuck than be fucked doesn't make you good at math. Well, like, yeah. yeah, exactly. It, but I think it's like, like you said, like your friends who like aren't very good at driving and happen to be bottoms. Like they, <laughs> they don't, they're not cause and effect. It just, it just <laughs> happens to be that way. And yeah. so if it happens to be that way, then it's like, yeah. oh, we'll, we'll say like, this like one archetype about them, but it's yeah. not actually truthful, but it's true to that specific situation. So it's funny. Right. It's like, it's like all bisexuals drink iced coffee. Like, no, there are bisexuals who don't drink iced coffee, but like all of my friends who are bisexual happen to love iced coffee. And it's just, so it works for that that situation. It's not always, so it's fun. I think it's fun when you take it lightheartedly and you're like, oh my God, like I fucking go to Lowe's all the time. Or I go to Lowe's all the time. Like, (laughs) I I love to build furniture. Like, I think it's fun because it connects you to the community. Yes. But I think it's a joke. Yeah, Yeah. But I think I, and it's hard. It's kind of like people who were trying to be do stand up like comedy and not trying to piss people off. Like yeah. at one point, can you have fun in the stereotypes? And then at one point, does it become offensive? It's, and it's yeah. It's in in my personal opinion, what I've experienced <laughs> is mostly with the younger people in the community who don't quite understand like that these labels aren't everything. That they don't mean what you think they mean. The fact that they use the word switch wrong will irritate me to no end. But the fact that you think being a top, like, whether or not you like to rail or get railed defines you as a person. It does not. It doesn't make any sense. What you like in the bedroom has nothing to do with who you are outside of it. I think that just comes from lack of experience when you have people who are still in high school and who have not uh, traveled and gone outside and like they don't have jobs and like they're not (laughs) like they're they're like still like babies. I don't don't know why I'm always talking about babies on this episode, but like yeah, shit, you want to somebody want to say or like they're children. Damn, I don't want to like talk negatively about them. I don't want to like make it sound like we're hating on the baby gays because honestly, I love baby gays. No, it's just that, like, the thing is that they are probably the majority on this platform. Yeah. So they're the ones spreading information that they don't really understand. And I think that's where a yeah. lot of this miscommunication comes from. And they're ingesting some of the stuff that I feel like, you know, like, cause sometimes I think about it. If I do like, am I talking way too much about stereotypes? Like, is it, a, it does it cross over well? Mm-hmm. Cause I don't want to be someone who perpetuates negative stereotypes. I don't want to do that. And there's no like, reason these stereotypes <clears throat> have to be negative. Like, they can literally just be a funny joke. Like, yeah. that's it. Like, all gay men listen to Whitney Houston. Like, yeah. obviously they don't, but, like, Whitney yeah. Houston fucking slaps and everyone knows it. Yeah. And who and has better taste than gay men? That's all I'm saying. Like, I know, right? <laughs> um, I just think, in the, and I would never talk bad about, like, baby gays. Everyone's been yeah. one. Everyone's been one. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. it, 
I was it, stupid. There's, I was it, so stupid. Yeah, right? there's, I mean, because there's lack of information. And, and the, with time, like, they'll figure it out and experience. Mm-hmm. And as everyone does. So, yeah. like, to not, to not have the information doesn't mean that they're less than. It just, they're, they're younger. They, of they're course. a little, you maybe a little more mistakes. naive. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the one thing that people always ask me. And they're like, well, how do you know what you're talking about? First of all, because a lot of the dudes are not aware that, like, I am a lesbian. Mm -hmm. They think I'm a whole man. Yeah. And they'll be like, how do you know what you're talking about? I'm like, because I've been on both ends, my guy. I know. (laughs) I'm like, yeah. My guy. For the most part, like, the reason that, like, people, I've known a lot for, like, giving relationship advice and sex advice and shit like that is because I have a lot of experience, especially in terms of sex, not so much in terms of relationships, but with experience comes, first of all, practice. Mm-hmm. And second of all, mistakes on top of mistakes on top of mistakes. Yeah, that yeah. I have learned to correct, and yeah. that is the only reason I know what to do is because I've done everything you shouldn't do. That's it. Like I don't think I'm better than anyone. I'm literally just like because I get that a lot. They're like, "Why do you think you know what you're talking about? Why do you think you're so smart? Like you really think you're so good in bed?" I'm like, first of all, I have references. I can call them if you want. But second of all, <laughs> do you want to see my references? You- I have a resume. <laughs> <laughs> but second of all, it's just. I have fucked up so many times that I literally just, in almost every situation, I know exactly what not to do to make it the worst it could possibly be. And that's yeah. it. You got to learn from your mistakes. If you don't yeah. learn from your mistakes, then like, you're not going to grow. You're not going to become a better person. Like, yeah. I, I, I mean, dead. that's like, why, I, just, yeah, I talk about my experiences on this podcast, but I feel like it can help people. Yeah. You know? like, exactly. I, and I liked it. And it's, it is a form of processing for me as well. You know what I mean? Like, I have something that happens to me and I talk about it on here because I feel like it could help people and mm-hmm. I feel like it could help relate, you know, and mm-hmm. it's an outlet. So yeah, I love, I love doing that shit. I love like, you don't have to be an expert. People think you have to be an expert to make, you know, a content, you know, like mm-hmm. you have to know exactly, and you don't, that's the whole no. fucking point. It's the best yeah. part of it. I don't know everything and yeah. I don't presume to know everything and I put myself I give unqualified advice. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when a listener submit a question and I say it's unqualified. You know what I mean? I'm not a licensed therapist. I just yeah. speak experience yeah. and I share what I've learned and, and shit like that. And like, yeah. I hope that it helps people. I've had people and from my past that have like listened to episodes and they're like, I prefer if you, you know, didn't uh, put this on here. And I'm like, I have not referenced you or anything about you. Mm -hmm. There's no way this will get back to you. I would never do that. It's nothing malicious, but I'm Mm -hmm. going to speak about my experiences on here. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like the narrative, don't fucking listen. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking shit. I'm literally speaking from my experience because I feel like it'll help people. And you fucking knew that I had this. Like you knew. Yeah. You knew what was going to happen. You did it. You did it, motherfucker. Like, you shouldn't do shit that you don't want people to talk about. You know, there's no way that it'll get back to, to you. And I don't care. Like, I, I wouldn't, I don't, I'm not doing that to, to do anything. I'm, you know, it's for me and it's for the listeners. So, like, fucking don't listen. Fair. Don't fucking listen. <laughs> and that's the other thing is people be like, people be like, well, I don't, like, you're a touch me not. Like, everyone should be a switch. I'm like, okay, then don't have sex with me. Yeah. That's literally why I say yeah. it is so that you can know beforehand whether or not you want to get involved with me. Because yeah. if you are the kind of person who needs to touch someone else during sex, yeah. you, first of all, it shouldn't not make sense to you that that's how I feel. But yeah. second of all, we don't work. And that's okay. We yeah. can date because sex isn't everything about relationships. We can yeah. be friends, but we should not have sex because we have no chemistry. Like that we, our preferences don't add up. True. And that's literally the whole entire and only point. Yeah. Well, you could date without having sex too. I mean, there's yes, a whole spectrum of, you know, asexual to sexual. And even if you don't even like, even if you are a sexual person, you could still date someone and then not be sexually oriented. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've, if that's, I've only, if that's what you, if you don't need it, you know what I mean? So I've only ever slept with one person I've ever dated. I'm telling you, they don't intermingle like romantic, sexual and platonic yeah. relationships for me are all completely separate and that's okay. Yeah. Because I'm okay with it. The other person's okay with it. So it doesn't matter. And yeah. nobody else should get to have an opinion on that, first of all. But second True. of all, like, whatever works for you, communicate your preferences and be open to listening to other people's. And if you either don't understand um, or don't agree, don't have sex with them. That's yep. it. They're not yep. a bad person. They're not wrong. They know way more about themselves than you do. And you don't have to sleep with them if what they like doesn't make sense to you. That's True. it. You have to stop wondering if you're gay for sin. You are. That's it. <laughs> 
I actually got to use my own sound the other day and it was yeah. delightful. Yeah, because I made a spam account and I got, uh, some, someone asked me, they're like, is that a guy or a girl or a trans? And I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just so vague. Yes. Yes. All of it. Correct. None of it. Does it and, even exist? Yes, Do we exist? The, what is existing? <laughs> what is it? And everyone got mad at me for not using my own goddamn sound because that was why I made it. So then I had to go make another one. But yeah. But then they asked the same question. So they were like, so yes to what? Guy, girl, or a trans? And I was like, I didn't use oh my, God. With my guy. My guy. My guy. That's the worst part about those is that I can't tell if they're trying really hard to be inclusive and failing or if they're trying to be a dick and succeeding. Sometimes I can't either, and I, that's sometimes like I will check so, like a comment if it's someone that regularly comments and it's like good stuff. I usually like it if I can't really tell about the comment. But mm -hmm. if it's somebody that I don't know mm -hmm. and I can't tell, I like just won't like it or like I'll like I'll delete it if it's like very ambiguous. Because sometimes I, like, uh, I'll the other it. day I had someone. Uh, I've been talking a lot about like weight and body image on my like side account um, yeah. a lot, and uh, I had. I responded to someone's comment who, and there were a whole bunch of comments in there and w this person felt very attacked by something someone had said, but I read the comment and I was like, this person isn't attacking you. And I didn't want that person to like write something that they were going to regret later or like be upset. So I just deleted it. Yeah. And people get mad at me for that. Sometimes they'll be like, you deleted my comment. And I'm like, it's my video. I didn't want it on there. Like I didn't think yeah. it was going to do me or you any favors. So yep. delete it. Sorry. That's it. Yeah. You've been posting, you posted like a couple things mm -hmm. and done some stitches about people who have talked about and have been like biphobic and, and shit like that. Um, tell me a little bit about that. I was not pleased with some of the response I got to that because people were like, this isn't technically biphobia. And I was like, if mm. you think that's what the problem is, then you're not paying attention. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to call someone a bigot or like a prejudiced jackass or a bad person. That's not what this is. All right people have their preferences it's really stupid that the only thing you care about in terms of like getting involved with someone is who else they might like that yeah. to me makes no fucking sense whatsoever but if that does happen to be how you feel whether or not it's biphobic technically isn't the problem shut up yeah you don't need to be very loudly and publicly dragging down an entire section of our community the biggest section of our community yeah for no reason other than this is what i prefer yeah. Who cares? Nobody asked. Like the bisexual, I don't, I'm not friends with any lesbians. Okay. Like all of my friends are bisexual women. And yeah. I, I, I got to tell you, there's like, there's something different about the way bisexual women love. It just hits different. Like, mm -hmm. especially for me as like a gender fluid person, like if I wake up one day and I'm like, I'm a, I'm a boy or like I'm a whole boy, like nobody has ever showed me the kind of love that a bisexual woman has showed me. And yeah. that's just a fact. Yeah. And like, the fact of the matter is that, like, there are so many people whose light shines brighter because you and your love exist. So mm -hmm. bisexuals deserve to know and feel that, first of yeah. all. But second of all, if you think that your opinion and, like, making your opinion very, very loud is more important than helping the biggest portion of our community feel safe and comfortable and yeah. welcomed yeah you're a piece of shit yeah shut the fuck up yeah it's insecurity yeah. you know like the whole thing like about oh like if you're a, a lesbian who only dates women who are lesbians or whatever and you're like yeah. oh i could never date a bisexual like someone who's into men but like whatever if it's because it's because they're with men and it's disgusting or because it's there's too much option and like oh they might go back that's it's like, psychotic. Well, it's that's psychotic because it's like, it, it, if they go back, it has nothing to do with you. And it has nothing to do with the fact that you're a woman. And it has nothing to do with the fact that like, they aren't as gay, you know? And so like, oh, they, they weren't really gay or, or blah, 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 because yeah. maybe they were with a, a man before and then they were with you and then they were with yeah. another man. It has nothing to do with that. It's a universal it's experience to <clears throat> date someone who ends up not liking you back. Like, that's why yeah. we have dating. Not yeah. every relationship ends in marriage, and that's for a reason. Yeah. And sexuality does not play into that, because if that person yeah. liked you enough from the beginning to get involved with you, they just realize that they don't like you. It's got nothing to do with, like... That's the scary part, though. I think that's the point of insecurity, you know? You just that's want the something point to of blame it on, but, like, go to therapy, Linda. Yeah. Like, you don't need to parade your bullshit <laughs> around and make people feel like they don't belong. Yeah, it's, it's insecurity. And I think it's funny, because, like, 
if if someone is bisexual, they they do have more option, and they chose you. They chose you. They could be with you, fucker. Anyone, <laughs> and you have the audacity to be offended by that. Yeah, yeah. You have the uh, go to bed. Yeah. Take a seat, relax, take a bubble bath, and just reconsider your point of view because yeah. you should be so fucking grateful to be in that person's life. And yep. the other thing is that so many, so many of the lesbians who say this bullshit regularly get involved with straight girls. Oh, yeah. And I'm just like, chase. you can't it's the have chase. it both ways. You can't say you don't want girls who date boys. That's so stupid. You that want the chase. So they want the chase. Because, they want, like, they whether, want to say, oh, yeah. you know, th- I turned them gay. First I bagged of all, the straight they were, girl. They were already, they yeah. were already some, some sort of gay. They were already on the spectrum, babe. Like, yeah. they wouldn't have fucked you if they didn't think so. Or they maybe wanted an experience and they wanted to try it out, which is so fine. Or maybe they know? are straight and they just liked you. Like, yeah, that's they just the like thing. You. Like, like, if I, there has been one man in my entire life that I have been attracted to physically. One man, and yeah. it was for maybe 30 seconds. I shit you <laughs> not. And I remember feeling it and be like, oh, that's what this is supposed to feel like. Because I hadn't realized I was into girls at that point. Yeah. And I, but I had never actually felt attraction towards a man. And then it yeah. happened once, and I was just like, whoa, that's what it's about. I'm not bi. I don't like yeah. men. Yeah. But like for 30 seconds, I was just like, I am physically attracted to this man. That yeah. was, I was like 17. It doesn't count. But if you are attracted to me, if you love me, if you're into yeah. me, if you want to be with me, why the fuck do I care about who else you're into? Yeah, I would say, I would, I would disagree with you. I would say that it did count just because it doesn't mean that it, you are into men. It could have been, you know, even if it, and even if it was just for 30 seconds, like it, it happened. You know what I mean? It, like, sorry, it doesn't not count. It's more just like, I don't value it. I don't like, like yeah. it doesn't, it has no impact on how I define myself or relate oh, to yeah. my sexuality. Oh yeah. Like, I, I mean, no, I, yeah, I have no doubt in my mind that any, under like the right circumstances, I could be attracted to literally anyone, but they'd have to be like the right circumstances. Yeah. But I don't say that I'm bisexual or pansexual yeah. because the way I label myself is to direct attention to myself from the people I want, which yeah. is girls. Yeah. I'm like, I'm a lesbian. I don't owe like a complex um, rundown of my sexuality and gender no, identity no. to any old folk I see on the street. I'm like, I'm a lesbian because I want girls who like girls to be into me. That's yeah, it. That's me too. what labels are. That's it. I've definitely been attracted to men though. Like I've, I, I, you know, I've had that, you know, high school love or whatever. Like I did, like I did feel those feelings, but the, the feelings that I felt for women were so much stronger yeah. once I had the experience to where I was like, okay, that was like, that was some weak shit. This is like way more. It's about what you feel, not how other people are going to classify you. Like I just said that, and there are going to be people listening to this who are like, well, technically they're bisexual. And I'm going to be like, but I'm not. Yeah. But, but I'm not like under the, like when I say under the right circumstances, I mean, like I would have to probably be like two days before my period. And it would probably have to be like Michael B. Jordan, something like that. Yeah. And, and maybe one day in like 35 years when we're both old people and I realize that I've never had this experience and maybe like that's what I mean yeah that doesn't make me attracted to men I think that just makes me down for a good time (laughs) no I get it I think some of that shit's primal though because every once in a while I'll have a dream and this is like when I'm like ovulate it has to it has to be (laughs) yeah and it has nothing to do with any emotion or any dating it's like I, and I have one specific dream that happened and I was like, what the fuck? It was literally like, I'm at a theme park, I'm behind a ride and I'm getting fucked by this dude. And then I went, <laughs> I love that for you. It's not, it's nuts. And it's, yeah. nuts. and I, and I woke up and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, that would never happen. First of all, I would never be railed by a dude. Let's, yeah. let's start there. Let's start there. <laughs> If anything, I would be pegging the shit out of him. <laughs> I know. Have you ever pegged a man, Bree? No, I haven't. Fuck. I haven't. I had high hopes for you. I kind of wish that I did before before I like stopped dating them. I, you still I wish can. I would have had that. There's still hope for you. you I just don't know if I have it in me. I I feel like Fair. maybe it, if when I out of anger and frustration of not being able to come out and be who I am, I just fucking peg a dude. Just yeah. Fucking you know do it. Yeah. But, it, I think that that time has passed for me. I don't, I don't see myself engaging with them in any shape or form at all. But 
it is funny when I get those dreams because I wake up and it immediately when I wake up, I start thinking about a woman. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not, like I'm yeah. like turned on and then I was like, ooh, and then I was like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So it's so primal though. And I've heard that. I've heard, I've heard lesbians and yeah. people who prefer like, women talk about that. So. And scientifically, like everyone is bisexual. Like everyone has the capability and capacity to be attracted to yeah. anyone with any either gender identity or genitalia. Yep. Regardless. It's all a social construct and it's all, it's all it's, it, it, what you're attracted to is based on shit from like your experiences in childhood. Like it's so crazy. And that's why stuff changes when you start like realizing more of like who you are and like all of these different constructs. And then you're like, oh, well, I don't have to adhere to that or, or that kind of thing. And then it kind of opens you up to maybe be attracted to other people you wouldn't normally be attracted to. Yeah. And that becomes your new normal. It's like a whole yeah. thing. And nothing is solid. Everything is fluid and constantly moving and constantly changing. And you don't have to be afraid of that is all I'm saying. Don't be afraid of change. Mm-hmm. And don't put yourself in, in, a, in a box that you feel like I feel like some people, yeah. if they assert themselves as a top and then they decide that they're not or, yeah. they're a, or they're averse. You know what I mean? And then they're like, oh, my God, imposter syndrome. So yeah. it's easier just to stick with it because it's like, well, I've already asserted that I'm this. Now I'm asserting that I'm not. Now I look not credible. I feel that in my bones. Yeah. Because I have been a touch me not since I started sleeping with girls. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason. Like, it's just, it's just yeah. never been what appealed to me about yeah. sex. And then I got into a relationship and I fell in love with someone and I got comfortable with them. And I was like, this is something I'd be willing to do. This is something I'd be willing yeah. to try. And I did. And I enjoyed myself. Yeah. And I still say I'm a touch me not. not yeah. Not. I think people are too closely putting it too close to like who they are as a person. And yeah. that's never a good thing because those things change. Like, and I'm not just saying that in terms of like things in a relationship, but just things in general. Like, I, I, I think I knew you, we were a basketball player, right? Or soccer, hockey, soccer, power lifter. I don't know why I thought Olympic basketball. Olympic weightlifting, never But basketball. you were an athlete. Okay. So yes. you're an athlete. <laughs> yes. But yes, like, let's say like for me, I was a soccer player too. And I, I was good. I played in college, all that mm-hmm. shit. And I was such a part of my identity. Mm-hmm. I decided to quit. It was probably the hardest thing I ever did because mm-hmm. it was a part of my identity. I was always a soccer player. I was always an academic, blah, blah, blah. And mm-hmm. that shit ends. So mm-hmm. if that's a part of your identity, it's going to be really fucking hard to, to transition out of it um, and it not just be a thing that you did. Yeah. Like, it, it, and it can be anything. If you define any, like, uh, if you define yourself as a Republican and you change or you define yourself as, you know, a Democrat, you know, like those really hard fucking things. And then you get so emotional behind it because it's like a part of your fucking identity instead I of it just think, being... Yeah, I think the title, though, is what makes those things so wrong. I think it's, the, it's like the values at the end of the day, the day that are important. It's not being a, le- being a lesbian is how I identify. It's not my personality. My personality yeah. is loving women with everything yeah. I have yeah. in my soul. <laughs> but, and like, essentially, those are the same thing. But you have to understand that underneath it all, it's like, I don't, it's like top is not even an identity. It's a label. Yeah. But like my personality is the kind of person that just wants to make other people feel good. Yeah. If you don't identify yourself with that, like identify as a lesbian, but if I decided to change, it's not going to make me feel any different because I haven't like put it as my identity. I haven't put being a whatever in the verse switch it as an identity could change because it had changed. I wasn't always that. I thought I was like a soft top at one point. Yeah. And I wasn't. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, but like identities, you know? labels, and who you are as a person are three very different things. Yeah. Like I don't identify as a top because like it's not an identity. It's a preference. It's a label. I'm like, yeah. this is what I like to do uh, when we're naked. Like that's it. Yeah. It's, not, it's not an identity. It's not who I am. It's literally just what yeah. I like and what yep. I don't like. That's exactly. it. But being a lesbian is, is an identity because I'm like, I, I, am a, yeah. I am a girl, quotes, who likes girls. Yeah. If that's not a, that. that's, yeah, that's not like just something I like. That's, that's part of who I am. Yeah. I've used, I've used la- different labels. I came out as queer mm-hmm. and my whole family was like, what? Like they didn't understand what it <laughs> meant. Like, and I was like, mean? fuck, I should have just said lesbian. <laughs> but I wasn't comfortable with the term yet. And I, I knew I, I wasn't bisexual. That, yeah. So I would always say like gay or like, I don't you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was really, I wasn't uncomfortable with it until I was on TikTok, like in yeah. like April or May. I was it was, it's really crazy, but, uh, yeah, it's interesting. So even with those labels, like, I feel like I'll always stick with lesbian. Like I just have it in me, but like mm-hmm. I, because I had, I had switched different ones. I, I don't want it to be too close to where, like, let's say 
I, you know, I meet someone and, and I'm like, oh, maybe I'm more pan or maybe this, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I kind of want to keep it open because you just never know. For sure. All right. Well, we will go to the questions with the queer segment. Cool. We'll, fo- we'll follow this whole thing about, uh, about, about sex and stuff. So this question comes from uh, Baby Gay. They're 25. Um, and they say, I'm listening to your podcast and I feel so seen and validated. I've been having such a hard time fitting into this community, having just come out, mm-hmm. figuring out how to date and face this whole quote unquote baby gay stigma I'm experiencing has been challenging to say the least. Wondering if you have any episodes or have any advice on having uh, sex with a woman for the first time and navigating dating slash relationships as a newbie. Thanks again. And thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to start with the sex part because that tends to be more in my wheelhouse than dating. The first rule, all right, is you tell the person you're sleeping with that you have never done this before. And that is super duper important for two reasons. The first yeah. is uh, for your own comfort, confidence, and reputation, to be completely candid. Because like you don't want to go into something that you've never done acting like you've done it and then have it look like you're just bad at it. So please tell that person that you don't know what you're doing and let them help you. Mm -hmm. The second is consent. Yes. That person may not be comfortable being your first time. That is, that can be, it doesn't, not necessarily is by like societal means, but that can be a big deal to some people and somebody might not want to be that person for you. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that obviously. Um, So you have to communicate that. Please and thank you. My advice is going to sound super cheesy, but I'm going to explain why it's not. Um, my advice is to wait for the right person. And I don't mean that how you think I mean that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean that more like, I'm not saying wait for the person you're going to marry, wait till you're in love, like wait until you meet the one I'm saying you wait until you are with someone that you trust, Mm -hmm. you are comfortable being naked with, because especially with someone you've like a kind of person you've never been naked with before, like that can be a very, very new, scary experience. And third of all, that you are comfortable communicating with. Yep. And third of, and fourth, that is that you are comfortable letting touch your human. Like these are all things that people don't consider. Like people literally just think of it as like a fuck, but there's like so yeah. many different aspects to it that you need to be comfortable with. Yep. So like, it doesn't have to be someone you have a pre-existing relationship with. It can be somebody you met out at a bar, but something about them just makes you comfortable with them. Wait for that person, that person that you could tell, I do want this. I don't want this. I do like this. I don't like that. Somebody yeah. who having their hands on your body won't make you panic, won't make you uncomfortable. Someone seeing, or even not seeing, because like you can keep on whatever clothes you want. You can keep the yeah. lights on. You can stay under the covers. You can do whatever you need to do to make yourself yeah. comfortable. Yep. But make sure that you are comfortable and that you feel safe. That is the right person. That's what I will, that's what I always say. I definitely second that, uh, baby gay. And it will increase your confidence if you have those questions answered, because it'll, it'll ease the anxiety that comes with yeah. the different parts like you were talking about. If it eases yeah. the anxiety, then it'll help you, you know, be more yourself, which will give you more confidence in, in yeah. return. But it's not, it's not, people focus too much on like the being good at it. And yeah. I always it's not say, about that. I, it's, it's not, it, it's definitely not about that. But like being good at sex is understanding what makes sex good. Not necessarily yep. being physically talented. Like, yeah. You could have the fastest motherfucking tongue in the world, right? Yeah. But if your girl likes it long, hard, and slow, you ain't shit. You're not doing yeah. shit for exactly. her. Exactly. So first of all, sex is like 90% mental. Straight it up. Like, it is. You can do whatever you want to someone's body, but if they're not into they're it, not they're in not in it. Yeah. It's not going to happen. So that's what you need to focus on is just being in the moment and enjoying yourself. Yeah. That's good sex. And if that person likes you, they're going to still enjoy the experience regardless yeah. if it's your first time or, or you mess up or there's mistakes. And that's a yeah. part of building intimacy too. Mm-hmm. Like I look back at like my first time and like my first time with a woman was also someone who also didn't, it was their first time too. Okay. And so we both were kind of figuring it out, which built our intimacy and built our emotional, it built our foundation for the yeah. relationship. You know, the little, like the little, um, the flub ups and the, the fuck ups and the little mistakes yeah. and stuff like that are all like things that I remember like fondly about yeah. it, even though we're no longer together and I, I am not in love with her. I don't want to be with her anymore. Like yeah. I think fondly of it because it, it was a true experience. Right. And so, like, I would not be afraid of those things. Those things make 
the relationship great or the experience great, you know, especially if that other person is just as open and then just like, oh God, like, oh no, you know, and you, and you learn from it and you communicate. So I would say, yeah, communication is key. I would say not to take yourself too seriously. Yeah, enjoy, relax. enjoy, enjoy the, at the door. Enjoy the experience. Like yeah. I usually am someone who is not good at those kind of things, but I had waited mm. so long to come out that I was so ready so ready to do it and so ready yeah. to like fuck up too. I wasn't like thinking yeah. like I was going to be the man and be amazing or yeah. whatever. I was just like, I am just ready to have this experience and, yeah. and whatever comes like comes of it comes of it, yeah. you know? And yeah. like, that's kind of the mindset that I would go into it as. And so, yeah. And I think if you're new and you're dating, I would definitely like, you know, go on the apps, make sure that that person is, in fact, if you are in fact into women, I would make sure that they're into women. If it's something that's your first time, you know, like, and make sure that it's, you know, something that if they just want to have an experience and you do too, make sure that matches up. So you're not, you know, if they want a relationship, that kind of, that kind of thing. I feel like it is more tedious at the beginning because you're so fragile at the beginning. I feel like as a baby gay. So that stuff affects you more. I mean, it still affects you, but like, I don't know. I just, I'd be cautious. You get about used that, to it. You develop, you develop a thicker skin. But yeah. the other thing, the other thing I want to say, and this is something that people tend to overlook a lot when it comes to like getting involved with a new partner, is stop having sex with people you're not physically attracted to. Yeah. That yep. is a ga- I have a friend, a good friend, who we would talk about sex all the time for years and like very, very intimately and openly with each other. And this person had never had a positive sexual experience, even since coming out. Yeah. And I said to them, I was like, but are you attracted to these people? And they said, well, like, I think so. And then one time they had their first experience with someone they were actually like felt physical attraction to. And they were like, it was like fireworks. And I'm like, that's what you want. That's, there's, first of all, life is too short for bad sex. So if you're not having a good time, just leave. You can do that. Yeah. Um, But second of all, there you can have like just casual sex like you can just chill like you can literally fuck whoever you want for whatever reason you want but the best sex is with the people you are actually physically attracted to and I don't mean that you just find them hot I mean like you feel physical attraction to them yeah I had I I feel like I'm in the same boat as your friend like I maybe had like two decent experiences Mm -hmm. when I before I was out of the closet when I was still like (laughs) dating men and the rest (laughs) were like just awful but I didn't realize how awful they were until obviously I had other experiences and I came out I just Mm -hmm. thought that my decent experiences were great and Mm -hmm. my bad experiences were like c plus uh until I realized what great yeah great sex was great intimate stuff and it like it it is it's too fucking short for that shit and you know it on the inside you know what I mean like you know that it's it's not quite right it's not what it's Mm -hmm. supposed to be it's not working out you know yeah, there, there are so many signs. And yeah, it is too short to have that. So baby gay, hope we helped you out with uh, yeah. our unqualified advice. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sids is maybe more qualified than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a professional. I don't get paid for this. I should though. You, if you guys want to pay me to have sex with me. I'm okay with that. Anyway, you, you should start a YouTube channel because I there's not a lot of queer sex ed people that do stuff on. I mean, CV Bobby is probably one of my favorites. I remember seen, watching her as a baby gay. I, I used to have such a big crush on her, to be honest. Oh my god, um, me too. Who didn't look at wow. her? She is like, yeah, she's got the confidence, she's got the energy. She's cute. yeah. The thing about Stevie's content that just differs from mine is that Stevie's very into like the technical aspect of it. She does, yeah. For me, sex is very much just mental. Yeah, you're more cerebral in that effect, I agree. But that's the shit that nobody talks about, which is crazy to me because to me it's the most important shit. Like, Yeah, I like it. I'm cerebral too, so I fucking feel it. I'm on on the same page. I'm like, if you want me and you make it known that you want me, you act like you want me, you react like you want me, it's good sex. I don't care. There we go. Like, <laughs> like you don't have to be like particularly talented. It's not about talent. It's about like knowing what makes someone tick and using that against them. And using it against them. <laughs> that I really didn't think you were gonna go that route. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> oh my god. And knowing what they want and not giving to them, using it against them. Oh, I'm the biggest fucking tease in the world, but we can't get into that <laughs> because if my mom ever hears me talk about this. She's going to um, yeet me out the window. Anyway. Ah, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. They don't get it. Okay. Well, we're going to go to the lightning round. All right. Cool. I ask you some questions and you have to answer really fast. Ah, okay. Doc Martens or Vans? Birkenstock. 
American Sachs, hey! <laughs> I'm just kidding, uh, Air Forces. That's, that's what okay, I Okay, really... Air Force Ones, let's go. Yeah. Um, flannels or Hawaiian shirts? Both, at the same time. There we go. Uh, favorite queer movie? Oh, fuck. Debs, maybe, because I suck. Okay. My least favorite movie is Below Her Mouth, so I'm going to say that. Best part of that movie is the 15 seconds that Elise Bauman is in it. And that's oh my it. God. I know. I know <laughs> that. I know because she's the one that works for the fashion. She works under her as like a fashion mm-hmm. thing. And yeah. She has like a small cameo yeah. in it. I know because I fucking love Elise Bauman. I love, like, I, oh my God. I saw her walk past my place of work like two years ago. No. I, I didn't process it fast enough to like go outside and say hi to her. And so I remember, <laughs> I remember watching her walk past sitting there for like 20 seconds and then walking out the door and just staring at the street hoping she would come back. She, she seems so nice and like she humble does. and like a good she natured person. She seems like person. a lovely human being. Yeah, yeah, she really fucking does. Yeah. One day. One, One day, day. I'll cross One the day. border <laughs> and I will see her. <laughs> Giving presents or getting presents? Yes. Both? Yes. Okay. Big spoon or little spoon? We already talked about that but both i but. love being held though. i'm not even gonna yeah. lie <laughs> but i also love to hold so like it really depends there is something about being held <laughs> um awesome well so thank you so much for being on this podcast if you want to um find out more about sid you can find them at sid's lifting face on tiktok and on instagram anywhere anywhere TikTok, instagram snapchat tumblr spotify youtube you oh. got that brand that brand man, look at that man that's a good brand man. right there um, if you enjoyed this episode, please drop us a rating or leave us a little written review. Help us get discovered by more people just like you. That's it for this episode, my queers. Thank you for listening and subscribing. Be you, be queer, stay safe. We will see you on the next episode.